All right guys, so you guys are probably well aware, but on my channel, we talk a lot about the different problems and topics that you guys should be able to solve and understand if you guys wanna land a job in the software engineering industry. But one of the things that I haven't really talked that much about are the mistakes that people typically tend to make during their coding interviews that might actually cost them that job offer. So today I really want to talk about the three most common mistakes that I personally think people make during their technical interviews that you guys should avoid at all costs. So I've gone through a ton of interviews so far in my career. I've interviewed at a lot of startups, I've interviewed at a lot of mid-sized companies, and I've interviewed at a lot of very large tech companies. And I think that throughout all of these different interviews, I've learned a ton of different things and collected different data points for things that you really should do during interviews and things that you really should not do during interviews. And not only have I actually interviewed at all these different companies, but I've also conducted a lot of different interviews to try and bring candidates into my company. So together, by interviewing at a bunch of different companies, as well as conducting a bunch of different interviews for my companies, I've learned about three very common mistakes that candidates typically make that ultimately lose them the job offer. The first mistake that I notice a lot of candidates make is not asking clarifying questions about the question they're being asked. And asking clarifying questions is actually an extremely, extremely important part of the interview process. Once you actually read and understand the question, now you need to understand all the very small details as well as anything else that might not have been mentioned during the problem. So for example, if I was the interviewer and you were the candidate and I give you a problem that read something like, given a list of numbers, return two numbers that sum to a specific target, you should probably ask some questions. So some of the questions that you actually should probably ask your interviewer are the following. Am I allowed to sum a number with itself? Are the numbers that I'm given unique? Are the numbers that I'm given sorted? What should I return if multiple pairs of numbers sum to that given target? So as you can tell, even though it seems like it's a very straightforward question, there's actually a lot of ambiguity that you should really cover with your interviewer. And this isn't only important so that you can clarify the ambiguity with your interviewer and solve the question at hand, but it's also very important because this is actually what you should be doing in the real industry. In the real industry, if you were to go work for a place like Google, you shouldn't really just take a three sentence prompt and then go back to your desk and start coding that feature or shipping that product or fixing that bug. You should really ask a lot of questions about the task that you're asked to do and understand why you're doing it as well as the different ways that you might wanna approach it and figure out what is really best so that you can solve the problem the best way possible. So asking clarifying questions is very important. It's very important because one, you need to clear up any ambiguity that there is in the problem to make sure that you can solve that question that you're given. And two, it's important because it shows that you're gonna ask clarifying questions on the job and that you don't just get a three sentence prompt and start going back to your desk to code. The next thing that you should really desperately try to avoid during your interview is losing your interviewer. So what I really mean by losing your interviewer is you wanna make sure that your interviewer understands everything you're doing throughout the interview every step of the way. You really wanna make sure that you take your interviewer by the hand and constantly guide them through the problem that you're wrestling with, the things that you're thinking about and the questions that you might have. And this kind of goes back to a lot of people thinking that interviewing is not a collaborative process and that's really not the case. Interviewing is an extremely collaborative process, and this is actually one of the biggest misconceptions in interviewing, but a lot of people think that you're solving a problem that's given to you by a stranger, and that stranger just strictly evaluates you silently and judges you for 45 minutes. And that's really not the case. A good interviewer really wants you to pass and will actually do everything in their power to help you do so. And as you can probably imagine, being able to actually effectively bring your interviewer with you throughout the problem and all the things that you're thinking about, as well as what you're choosing to do and why, that really shows good communication, which is also extremely important in the field. So make sure that you don't lose your interview, communicate effectively, and make sure that your interviewer is totally on board with everything that you're doing, as well as all the stuff that you're thinking at any given moment during that interview. The third and final mistake that I think a lot of candidates make, unfortunately, during the interview process is that they just don't prepare correctly. And personally, I'm actually a very strong believer that whatever happens during the day of the interview is not nearly as significant as how you prepared before the interview. I honestly think that when you come into an interview, a lot of the result is already baked in with all the preparation that you did or didn't do beforehand. So at the end of the day, a lot of interviewing strictly just comes down to problem solving. And I really think that that problem solving is not something that you're just gonna learn when you sit down during an interview, but it's something that you're gonna have hopefully, hopefully <laughs> have practiced beforehand and have built a solid foundation in before you walk into these different interviews with these companies. I honestly think that most people actually fail their interviews and can't solve the problem that they're given, not because they're not able to, but because they don't put in the proper preparation to give themselves the best chance to be able to do so. 
I really think that if you prepare correctly for your interviews, these interviews should just really be you doing what you already know how to do. And now the interview will become more about you just performing under pressure and a strict time constraint. When you study, make sure you don't leave any gaps in your knowledge, right? If you say that you know trees and you really don't know trees and you have an interview with Google in a week, you're really now just gambling, right? You're gambling about whether or not you're gonna get a question about trees. And if you don't, knowing my luck, I would. So if I didn't prepare for trees, I would get a question on trees. So take the time to prepare beforehand and make sure that you go over all the topics you might be asked. So the next thing you should really do in your studying is make sure that you start with easier topics and easier problems and slowly move on to harder topics and harder problems. And this will help one, make sure that you don't have gaps in your knowledge. And two, it'll make sure that you're actually building a solid foundation that you can interview on. Another thing to think about when you study is don't worry about how many problems you solve. If you guys are going to use a website like LeetCode, don't worry about solving 500 questions. What I would focus on is solving enough questions in each of the different topics that you might be asked such that you feel comfortable understanding those topics. And the reason that that is important is because by solving, let's say, even 50 questions and really understanding them, you're going to be able to take all those underlying concepts and apply them to a handful of new problems that you've never seen. Whereas if you memorize solutions or you kind of just casually went through, say, 300 problems, you probably actually don't really understand what's happening underneath the hood. And you're only going to be able to solve those questions if you get those questions, as opposed to if you get a new question that might be similar or use certain topics that are related to the problems that you did. So don't memorize, understand and learn. I always say that memorizing will help you with just a single problem and understanding will help you with many problems. And finally, if you guys need help preparing for your interviews, be sure to check the link in the description to my Patreon page. I offer tons of services like study plans and mock interviews to help make sure you guys pass your interviews. All right guys, so that's all I got. Those are the three most common mistakes that I've seen candidates make during their coding interviews. And again, those are not asking clarifying questions, losing their interviewer and not preparing properly. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, do me a favor and leave it a like and subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you guys next time.